Namaste. Welcome to this exciting episode of Sathology, Debunking Mythology. Today we are talking about the mind, the most misunderstood topic in the Western Hemisphere. Actually, Hemisphere we should not say in the Western countries. So, why it is the most misunderstood topic? Because the faulty philosophies, and I am going to tell you, faulty philosophies are one life syndrome, we have only one life, just enjoy life and then take medicines, go to psychiatrist, psychiatrist go to psychologist, all these things and take their help. Nobody knows about the mind, but we know about the mind. Now, I come from India and, and in India, yoga was being taught. And so, many lectures I've heard of prominent neurologists, you will understand what I'm saying, or neuroscientists, or many of the so-called mind experts, and, and a big program of masterminds goes on, on mindset training. Now, I studied them all, nobody knows about the mind. Why I say that? Because they do not know the function of the mind because they think of mind as the body. They confuse intelligence with the mind. They think that the brain is intel creates intelligence or brain, brain is a storehouse of intelligence. You know, my simple question is, when your finger gets hurt, how do you feel the pain? Immediately, like if you bring your finger in a fire, you immediately remove it. I'll give you the analogy of a plane. A plane has body, has engines, and the pilot flies the plane. So, pilot is sitting in the plane and flying the plane. Pilot is experiencing the flight. It is seeing, he is seeing the clouds, he or she is seeing the clouds, he is seeing the wind, he is seeing his monitors and he is flying the plane. Is pilot the plane? No. Engines are the one which are pushing the plane through the air. Wings of the plane are lifting the plane in the air. So, there is a body functioning, there is an energy functioning, energy being produced and that energy in a human body analogy can be of the heart. But the pilot is sitting in the cockpit just directing as per his decisions or as per his training or desires. He wants to go the plane bank right, plane banks right. But will you call pilot the plane? No. Will you call, call engine the plane? No. Similarly, we as spirit souls are sitting in this body, which is like a machine. And we are using this body to direct it to do what we want to do. So, mind is like the hard disk or the, how do you call it, the mind here is the entire wiring of the plane which is goes into miles, any modern aircraft of Boeing, any of the planes you can say miles of wiring carries the decisions, determines the characteristic of the plane. Intelligence are those super computers which are sitting there which are also being directed by the pilot or autopilot but they have been directed by the, somebody. So, and but the pilot is flying the plane. This is the analogy. This is how we function. We as spirit souls, in Sanskrit it is called Atma. We are directing the plane as per our desires. We are directing our body as per our desires. Like I just, I guessed it, just gesticulate a lot, gesticulate or gesticulate a lot. I make 
hand movements a lot. So that's the way I am my I function. So my body when I'm talking to you and and I am explaining this very intricate concept from my own book Transcending the Mind and which is actually the original work of Patanjali. The I am explaining and with my gestures, with my voice, with my understanding and my practice, everything has gone into it. But it is my soul which is talking to you. Because I am using the instrument of this body to speak with you. So we need to separate mind, separate intelligence and separate the body. Body is not the mind, body is not the intelligence, but we as spirit souls are sitting in this body, directing this body. So plane analogy, body analogy, analogies are like elastic. You cannot stretch them too much, it's going to break. So be with me. So I'm going to talk to you about fallacies of what people say. And all the neurologists, neuroscientists, doctors, I'm talking about all of them who are working on the concept of Western medicine. Western medicine, we all know the implications. Sometimes it's very good, sometimes it's not good. But when it comes to mind, the Western science doesn't work. Because they never thought about the mind. They are very one life syndrome. You die, you have only one life, you get buried in the sand or earth or you get burned, cremated and the experiment is over. No more after this. Creates a very hopeless society. We have seen that. People committing suicide, people, all kinds of things people do. In karma language, suicide is not recommended. Not even try it. There is a hope in this world and we are here to give you that hope. So before I start off, Pramad Viparya Vikalpa Nidra Smitya. These are the five functions of the mind. They are Sanskrit words. What it means is physical perception, distorted perception, alternative perception, no perception and perception through past experience. This is how and the presence of mind is all over the body, not here on the brain. Intelligence presence is all over the body. And let me also give you one amazing information that the intelligence brain according to Ayurveda is an organ which has the processing capacity but somebody needs to use it it's like a tool soul uses this tool for you so the entire mindset my this what i'm telling you the entire mindset training is completely marketing gimmick it is designed to make you make wrong decisions. Yoga focuses on buddhi, intelligence. Intelligence comes from past life. Your good karma in your past life. And when you use, so that's why you'll see, everyone has same amount of brain the quantity or the size but the intelligence functions in everyone are different. Some people are mathematical oriented, some people are emotions oriented, some people are feelings oriented. Today's the medicinal organ machines or science has divided the brain into left and right hemisphere. There is an old knowledge, nothing new. Mentioned in even the eyesights are also different. 
you know, left eye has a different function, right eye has a different function. But today we are going to focus on mind. Many, many people make the big mistake of talking about mind without understanding vritti, which I talked about perception. Those perceptions are the functions of the mind. Can you control the mind? My question is, why do you need to control the mind? There is no need to control the mind. You need to control your intelligence. And this is where the programs that I'm organizing and conducting with a lot of success has helped people come out of medicines, help people come out of depression, permanent depression, and many people have got new hope in life. And how do we do that? So I'm going to take you some things where I'll say control exhalation and control inhalation and holding of breath, it helps in stabilizing the mind. In common parlance, is it, it is called breathe in, breathe out, but they don't say hold. So if you breathe in, breathe out, and you hold your breath, naturally your mind becomes peaceful, pranasya. So mind is also based on functioning of prana, prana vayu, the life air movement through the nervous system, ida pingala sustruma. So in the nadi system is the most accurate representation of the body. Simple tests you can do, when you are feeling cold and one side of nostril is closed, you lie down on the same side which is closed, on the opposite side, suppose the right nostril is closed and if you lie on the left side, then the nostril becomes opened up because the air movement becomes conflicted on the left side and the right side opens up and immediately your nose block will be over. Or you do Surya Namaskar, your nose block will be over. You know, as a practicing yogi, or I can tell you one thing, that yoga and asana are two separate topics. Asana means positions to open up your channels of flow of wind in your body. And that's how whenever they get obstructed, you feel uneasiness, unhealthiness. So asana is only meant for that purpose. Yoga starts when you are comfortably situated. Then you can do yoga. So most of the yoga schools in the West, they are sometimes misdirecting people on actual purposes of yoga. Because of many factors. Number one factor is their Christian upbringing or any other Islamic or any other upbringing. People, people connect yoga with religion, which is totally wrong. Yoga means, yoga is a spiritual process to connect you with the original creator. It is not a religion. It is a in Sanskrit, we call it dharma. Dharma doesn't mean religion. So, in the Sanskrit word, if you look at Sanskrit word, and I read from Sanskrit, I translate this book from Sanskrit. So, when you breathe in, breathe out and hold, your mind becomes stabilized. What it means is that your vritti becomes subdued. Hmm? So, subdued means in the sense that you are not able to feel good or bad or neutral. You just are there. That is subdued. And then you automatically feel peaceful. You say, in a general language, my mind is peaceful. Like for example, you had a good sleep, you are fresh. You had a good sleep, 
in the day, like a short nap, you are fresh. Because you are breathing normally, lying on a flat surface and you are feeling better. This is the first step in transcending the mind. You don't need to control the mind. You need to rise above the mind. Okay, that's the whole book title is book. So uh, the first step is I'll introduce a new concept today, which you must have heard it many times, and this is also given by Patanjali. And Patanjali tells us that the mind becomes controlled when pravritti special meditative attachment towards subjects happens. So that means that when you are focused on doing something, mind becomes controlled. That means it is subdued, vrittis are subdued. So by subduing the vritti, you automatically become you, might, you feel better, focus. Now, for individual cases, what I recommend you is join our courses because everyone is different. Not everybody follows the same thing. Everyone's karma is different in their previous life. So, if the previous life karma is different, you cannot have the same yoga or same meditation technique like anyone else. That's why the ancient sages were giving different mantra to different individuals because they knew their karma can be different. So you have to evaluate the vritti. So we have a special program to evaluate your vritti and suggest you a custom meditation process. Not all meditation processes work the same way. Like you can go to a class, you can breathe in, breathe out. That's a very common exercise, which you can do it at home also. But if you want to progress further in keeping a stability of mind, then it's a separate process. You cannot pacify the mind through medicines. What medicines do is increase the, some chemicals, decrease some chemicals. But it is again the body. Mind is not in the body. I said it's separate. It has come through your previous life. Intelligence also comes from previous life. So they are, they are here because that mind which you developed over there is shaping your current body and your karma also. Shaping your current body. So this mind has been with you for many lifetimes. It is responsible for giving you different births. Sometimes in a rich family, sometimes in a poor family, sometimes not even in human species. There are 84 lakh species or 8.4 million species of life. You have traveled many places. So if anyone tells you something else other than this, then they don't know what they are saying because it's not it's not a current it's not a it's a new idea not a traditional thought traditional thought means coming from yoga parampara from the traditions of yoga so that's why when they say mindset training and or mindfulness it's a very vague term normally people spend a lot of money but they don't come out of it because they are not following the process. What we do is we follow a process and you can you are guaranteed to attain results because we are going to help you first debunk the wrong messages because your mind is unique to you. So general methods won't apply to you. Very specific methods are going to apply to you. So, your mind becomes stable when you do, when you focus on things which you like to do. 
that's a first step in building a stable mindset now how do you build that mindset is through solidifying your intelligence or making your intelligence stronger than before and that's what transcending the mind focuses on how do you do that the specific techniques we use obviously breathing exercises are common so that you are comfortable because if you are not comfortable you won't be able to do that so you have to be comfortable then we choose a vishaya pick up a topic pick up a something a hobby or diy do it at yourself at home or any other even sports is good enough like certain sports like golf are very good for that sometimes i do take my clients or my students on a golf course because that is a wonderful way to connect people with themselves and that's where the mind starts becoming stable that's the number one technique now there are many techniques which we'll discuss in this entire series and we'll keep discussing wrong things which people teach if somebody tells you that you have to you need some training or join some commercial course or take some pills and become a little bit peaceful or follow the movie where a hero always goes when he's distressed he drinks totally wrong method because that's how you not relieve yourself of the sadness or sorrow or the emotions you're going through so there are certain techniques which we follow to as i told you the one technique is building your attachment towards the vishaya which i mean subjects so thank you for joining today and keep on watching sathology and keep on listening to this transcending the mind experience program there are a lot of programs we organize all over the country plus we take retreats outside the country you can join us you can write to us on the email which is shown on your screens thank you and namaste